Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we want to give God all the glory Amen. and all the praise because yes, He is worthy of it all. Yes, Amen. 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 We are doing our series on the characteristics of a believer. Talked about a couple of weeks ago about able to listen to God. Then we talked about loving all mankind. And last week we had to interject how to handle fear because that's the enemy's biggest weapon towards the believer because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And today we'll be talking about how to praise God, how to I mean how to how to have a mind to suffer. How to have a mind to suffer. Amen. Amen. We we read out at first Peter chapter four um, verses 1 and 2 and skip down to 12. I, I want to read it from a different a version uh, and I, I thought this was interesting. Uh, sort of the same thing with the Living Bible but it, it kind of breaks things down. It says, Since Christ suffered under under, uh, under and went pain, we must have the same attitudes he did. We must be ready to suffer too. For, to, for remember, when your body suffers, sin loses its power. And you won't be spending the rest of your life chasing after evil desires. Amen? But will be anxious to do the will of God. Part of that's part of the learning process is that we once we realize that when we are chasing after evil desires, the suffering can be uh, seen like it's endless because of our disobedience. We, and and uh, we're gonna look at some reasons why we suffer. But when we don't realize this particular passage of scripture when it says, for as much as, as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, he suffered unto his death. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. So we gotta have a mind to suffer. We have to, amen? For he have suffered in the flesh, have ceased from sin. Once we realize that the, the magnitude of what sin does to us, amen, that's why we say here our motto is, we sin, but we can sin less. Amen? Amen. Uh, so it's important. And then we jumped over to verse 12 where it talks about, don't think it's strange, the, the uh, strange concerning the fairy charge was just to try us. As though some strange thing has happened to, unto us. We've got to realize that God knew all about it. He allowed it to happen. It's part of his process. And we've got to realize, let's first define, define suffering. The state of undergoing pain physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, it's like, a, it's like a, a distress. And distress means extreme anxiety, sorrow, pain. It could also mean heart Ship. Severe suffering, sometimes difficult or unpleasant that we must endure or overcome. Example is a person who is thrown into property and they, they lose everything. Now they have to, they had, they had a, mount, a house up on the hill, now they lost everything, now they're living in a shelter. To actually get through that can be very emotionally and mentally uh, uh, the suffering. Amen? So we've got to understand that Job said, and uh, Job 5, 7, he said, Man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. So we're born into this world full of trouble. Amen? No one is immune to suffer, to immune to suffering and adversity. Amen? Humans, humans suffer. Humans also inflict suffering on others. Suffering is a lesson. Suffering is a lesson to unlock true potential of yourself, I'm reading it again. Suffering is a lesson to unlock true potential of yourself. A lot of the things that we go through for <coughs> suffering, we want to know what we was all about. We want to know if we can handle things or not. But we try to push, you know, most people today want to just push pain and suffering away. But there's a lesson in suffering. Yeah. There's a lesson in suffering. And we wouldn't know who we are and how much we can handle things if we didn't go through nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen? The Bible says that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We should fear no evil. So he didn't say go around the valley. He said go through the valley. Because when we go through something, we can realize on the other side 
how God has strengthened us to get through these things. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We Praise all experience want, need, persecution, sorrow, loneliness. But some of us suffer for what we have done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And others suffer because what people do to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and many suffer because they are victims of circumstances which they cannot control. We can't control some things. You know, there's an accident. We, we suffer waiting in line. <laughs> Amen. To get to work. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach that believers are exempt from tribulation right. and natural disasters that come upon the world. But it does teach that believers can face tribulation, crisis, and um, personal sufferings with a supernatural power. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Which is not available to non-believers. So we as believers... We can have the mind to suffer just as Christ has suffered. We've got to have the same kind of mind because even though the things he went through, he suffered under death, that that wasn't the end of it, though. Amen? Yeah. He conquered death for us. Amen. So whatever we face in this life, no matter how much suffering we go through, the end result is absence from the body, present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 So we've got to ask ourselves some questions when we suffer, when things happen to us in our, in our lives. What is God trying to say to me? Mm -hmm. What is he trying to say to me? Mm -hmm. What is he trying to teach me? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't think we can learn things from going through some stuff. <coughs> oh, yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, yes, we can. Mm -hmm. We see how much we are frail within ourselves and try to figure things out. But it helps us to really, it draws us closer to God and his, his, his wisdom. Hallelujah. Because we thought we had it under control, but Jesus. we lost it. Now, here comes God and his infinite wisdom and guidance and says, look, I got it. And we don't have no problem giving it up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we, what, what are we doing? We're learning to depend more on the Lord. Amen. And that's what he wants. Amen. That's what he wants. And here's another question we've got to ask ourselves. What steps are I to take, you and all to take, as a result? That's why we go through something. What, what's, what's the next step? Should I rebel and say, God, I don't want to go through this, you know, and try to avoid it? But it doesn't matter how much you avoid it. You still got to go through it. Yeah. We see the, the tragedy of those who were in the, in the wilderness. Forty years. It was an 11-day trip. But because they was complaining and murmuring and fussing, and, you know, they had no food, and he fed them food from heaven, manna from heaven, and he had nothing to drink, and he got water out of a rock. That still wasn't satisfied. So we can learn some lessons through suffering and understand how to have a mind to suffer. Because there's still some things we're learning about ourselves. Yeah. And the only way we can think about it, you see a kid, what is one of the things you hear about a kid always? You have children. One of the first things they say that irritates all of us I know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> well, I know, you know what I mean? And it's, we got to realize that, you know what I say now? Okay, you're going to find out that you didn't know. Amen. 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 But that's the way God sees us. He allows these things to happen in our life. And, you know, he wishes that we don't say, I know. We should say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Amen. Amen. What are you trying to teach me? Amen. And what should be my next move? That's how we ought to have a kind of mind. So it's going to, it's going to really depend on what kind of attitude we have yeah. towards God when things happen to us. Do we run away from Him? Or we say, okay, God, you know, you, you love me. You said those you love, you discipline. So, I mean, you love me, so you wouldn't put up more that you, I, I can't handle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because even though when temptation comes, you're going to make a way of escape mm -hmm. if I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a purpose why you allow these things to happen in my life. In our lives, when we suffer. It's the reason why he's allowing these things to happen. Amen? Amen. Let's go some more detail to try to explain here in that verse of 1 Peter 1, uh, 1 Peter 4, 1, where it says, uh, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Oh, amen, amen. Think about that. I mean, Jeez. when we, when we, we know Christ didn't sin. And 
He suffered, but it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose that you and I, right now, at this very moment, can experience the love of God. We have attained eternal life because what he suffered. We live forever. We've been captured and, uh, 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 you know, freed from uh, uh, damnation for what he has suffered for us. So we're going to look at some of the reasons today why we suffer and, and why suffering is so prevalent because everybody wants to get away from suffering. You know, you can have that. I don't, want, I don't want to go through that. You know what I mean? You deal with it. But we're going to have to deal with some things. And it's not, I'm telling you, if you look at it from, from the perspective on this verse when it says, Likewise, with the same mind, he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So it's like, okay, now we know our flesh is, has a whole new different attitude. It wants the gratification. Amen. But as we trust in the Lord, yes, our flesh is going to suffer. But in the long run, we realize that, you know, we get over it. Because if we stay in, look at verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the, in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. What happens is if you stay in a state where, you know, you don't allow the suffering. And you stay in a state of, you know, you're spending your time living like mere men and doing whatever they want to do in their flesh. What's going to happen is you're never going to be satisfied. You're going to stay in a, a state where you're suffering as a busybody. You're not suffering as a believer. You're suffering as someone who's disobedient. Now watch what happens when, you're diso when we're disobedient. The wrath comes upon our lives. Some things God's going to say, look, i gotta, I got to take my hands off. Because right now, I have to give you a red in mind. There's some things that you want to do. Now, I'm trying to warn you and let you know what's going on. Amen. You ain't got to go this route. But if you suffer for my sake, amen. See, all of us are suffering in the sense that we are dying to self. Yeah. The Bible says this, and this is powerful. Watch this. In Matthew chapter uh, uh, 10, you can write down your notes, 10, 38 says, He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So he says, he that taketh not his own cross, other words, and follows unto me, our life, and is not worthy of me. Other words, God is the one who, he's the part of word of clay. And if we try to avoid his hand in molding and shaping us for the master's use, what we're doing is we're doing like when Jesus told Paul in uh, Acts chapter 9, why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you fighting me? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to mold you. I have a purpose and a plan for you in your life. Now, you've got to hold still. Yeah, my, my burden is light and my yoke is easy, but the world's burden, it's going to be heavy. Yeah. But when you come my direction and come my way, you're going to suffer a little bit, but you're going to realize that it's all, it's, it's, it's the, the main purpose is when we do the will of God, we end up a whole lot better. Amen. Amen. We end up a whole Amen. lot better. In that verse 39, in that Matthew chapter 10, 39 says, He that finds his life shall lose it. Amen. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Praise Amen. God. Amen. So when we go about doing our own thing, Jesus. what's going to happen? We're going to lose it. But when we give our life up for him, amen, the life that he has given us, amen, it's not all that bad. That's why now the things that we experience up to this point, the sufferings, we realize now that when it's all said and done, God, you all right. Yeah. I see what you, I didn't see, you know, I didn't see what you were trying to do at first. Yeah. But now I can see what you were trying to do. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's so funny. I, I rarely ever really break out on my face. On my body, because you know, I always that resort to that things you put into your body. For some reason, this morning I woke up with one of those witch bumps on my nose. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'm just talking about suffering physically. Yeah, amen. I said, I gotta be on the camera, man. That Bible said this big old thing on my nose, you know what I mean? And I'm like, what is going on? Oh, and let me try to divert my to divert my, my attention away what was going on because I'm concentrating on the big thing. Y'all can't see it, right? Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Because yeah. 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 miraculously, when I took my mind off it, it went away. Wow. Just this morning when I woke up, I said, what is that? Mm. What is that on my face? Well, come on. 
Why couldn't it be here or on there? But it's wet on my nose. So I'm suffering within myself mentally and physically, you know what I mean? And you know, that's what the enemy has the enemies all about. So I, I just said, well, you know what? I see you. I said, at least it's either mess my tie or <laughs> backdrop or whatever, you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, you know, I got in the shower, I looked in the mirror, it was gone. Amen. It was gone. So I, I look at how good God is, just that instant. And I, I mean, I had to share that with y'all because I, I know, you know, that could be, that, stuff like that could really have people yeah. suffer. Yeah. You know, you, you ladies buy a brand new dress and then you get a, you, you find a little hole somewhere and it's like, oh my goodness. Amen. Mercy. You, you, you're not right the whole day. Uh, amen. Yeah, mercy. Yeah, amen. You don't want to talk to nobody. You still got to go to this event and you know it ain't right because you don't feel right, right? right. Amen. So we got to just be keeping real. Amen. 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 Awesome. Some people will do anything to avoid pain. Sin loses its power to defeat us in our suffering if we focus on Christ and what he wants us to do. If anyone suffers for doing good and still faithfully obeys in spite of suffering, that person has made a clear break with sin. Clear break with sin. I want to read that last part. Anyone who's suffering for doing good and still faithfully obeys in spite of suffering. Because a lot of times, we're doing good. Yeah. And then we're still Amen. suffering. Amen. And some of us break away and say, God, come on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this still going on? And you ever notice you don't ever hear anything? Yeah, right. <laughs> he never just, he just, oh. you're like, oh, okay, all right, you know. That person has made a clear break with sin. See, because sin, sin is only for a season. It doesn't last long. If you sin once, you gotta, it wants you to do it again. Because it really has no value. It is, the, the, the sin, the way of sin is death. <laughs> it's, the way of sin is death. So it, no, it never really brings life. It only brings temporary pleasure at that particular time. Amen. Amen. Let's look at some of the reasons for, uh, for suffering. We bring suffering upon ourselves. It's one of the reasons. Disobedience, lack of discipline, wrong choices made in life come back to haunt us. Hello. Man, I can remember when I, why did I go down that road, man? Why did I do that? And we see in our loved ones and our children going down some of the same routes, and we want to say, stop, hold. Yes, but, you know, it, it's like they, they, don't, they don't even hear. And you try everything in the world to try to say, no. You know? Jesus. But the power of prayer does work. Yes, it does. Oh, amen. Because you don't want them to stumble like we stumble. No. But when we stumble, we learn something. See, they have to learn some things, too. Yeah. Amen? they got to learn to go through some things, too. So those things come back to haunt us. Long-term abuse of our bodies may bring on sickness. That's how some people suffer. Yeah. You know, if I treated my body really bad in years and uh, teen years and now, and, you know, it's not going to be working out too good for me later on in life. Amen? Amen. It's going to, it's, we're breaking down, folks. <laughs> Amen? Another, another reason why we suffer, reasons for suffering. God is taking corrective action because of sin and disobedience. In other words, we suffer because now God is taking action. He, he's here to correct us. He wants to correct us. So he's taking action, and this is how i got to take them because I see what they're doing, and their mind is made up, and they're going to continue on this path, and I already made a design, a path for them to walk over here, but they're over here doing this. So now what i got to do is i got to go in here and correct them a little bit. Amen. I gotta correct them and discipline them because he loves those that he loves and disciplines. Amen. So you. you know, because we're what? We're a child. Mm -hmm. That's what a child does. Because, like I said earlier, a child doesn't know. God, the parents knows. They know. And what will a child will always continue to do? But I know. So God has to step in and discipline us. Another reason why we we uh, suffer. God may permit suffering so we learn to respond to problems in a biblical way. Now, here's the a, here's a thing, here's the reason. A lot of us in church, and, you know, we still might be sitting, and, 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 and um, what is God is trying to help us realize that you're taking on, you need to respond from a biblical way. Don't avoid it. Don't accept it as, we used to sing a song years ago, some of you might know this song. Uh, it goes, uh, I'm only human. Oh, hold up, hold up. Don't use another scoop. Yeah, we, you're human, but we have a supernatural uh, ability in us, which by the Holy Spirit, which we can do all things in Christ 
who strengthen us. So what we're doing is by saying that statement, we're only human, we're, we're, we're allowing that sin or allowing that thing in us to, to accept it. But God wants us to deal with it. Yeah. Amen. He wants us to deal with it because from a, from a spiritual, biblical way, what does my word say? Trust in me. Give it to God. Don't try to, you say I'm only human because you really want to keep on doing it. <laughs> well, you know, he's moving us away from that kind of mindset so we can have a mind to suffer. See, those things that we think we need around us, to have a mind to suffer is that once we give it to God and we realize that it ain't really good for us, what happens is we go, we go through a state of understanding like, you know what? I can't live without that. It ain't really all that bad. Just like some of the habits, the bad habits we had, once we gave them to God and God fixed them and now he gave us good habits, we don't even miss those things no more. Praise God. We don't even miss them no more. Because at one time, we, we, thank God it's Friday. We had to go out and do whatever, you know what I mean, to celebrate. And then we hate it when Monday came. All day Monday and Tuesday, we hiding, trying to get over from a hangar or whatever. Amen. Amen. Seeking relief from suffering, but rather learning to please God by being responsive and obedient to him in his word. So we got we to gotta seek relief from the Lord. Amen. Because he'll give us an understanding as we suffer. Amen? Another reason. Sometimes God permits us to suffer to teach us that pain is a part of life. Whoa! Far too many preachers, false preachers I say, teach, pray the pain away. Rebuke the devil. Deny it. Don't claim it. Well, let me tell you something. A couple of weeks ago I got really sick. You know, not really sick, but it was, it got a cold, but your colds now last a month, it seemed like to me. Yes. And, you know, I seen something on TV and, you know, I don't believe in that because it's not what God says. You know, the guy was talking about, don't claim that sickness. I'm sitting up there, can't breathe, and I'm saying, man, it didn't claim me. <laughs> it didn't claim me. Now it's here. You talking about don't claim it? It doesn't make any sense. We, we got a body that's going to be subject to the, all the kind of things of the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. We go over China right now to get around that, where that virus is. It might jump on us. Mm -hmm. It might jump on us. Amen? So it has nothing to do with you. We got to understand that God allows us to realize that we, we suffer like anybody else. Yeah. If it came to a point where every Christian didn't suffer any kind of sickness or disease, you know how many people be Christian? People be lined up and try to get saved. Yeah, amen. But that's not how it works. No. Amen. Another reason why we suffer. God may permit suffering for our own well-being. Christ did not evade the cross. He said, Father, if it be possible, move this cup from me. Amen. Yeah. But not my word, but your will be done. Yeah. He didn't try to escape suffering. Hebrews 12, 2 says, He endured the cross, despising, despising the shame. Amen? For the joy that was set before him. What was the joy? He knew that the final word was not crucifixion, suffering, but it was resurrection, victory. Yeah. So listen, before there, was a before there was a resurrection, there was a crucifixion. So he suffered the crucifixion. And what we're doing now, we're suffering our own super, uh, uh, crucifixion. We're, things, we're dying of self. But we're, we're being raised in understanding. We're being resurrected in knowledge and wisdom of God. Amen. And see, that's why we can, that's why we, we, let me tell you something, we locked in now. Oh, yeah. Didn't want to make any sense for him to come this far and say, you know what, I had enough of the church stuff, I'm out of here. Amen. Yeah. That don't even come to our mind. We have realized in our, in our own life that this is the way of life now. Yeah. 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 This is where it is. So we're going to continue to die ourselves so with a whole lot more. We can suffer a whole lot better now and understand it now. Mm -hmm. Because we saw through our own Bible, through our own life, where God been dealing with us, you know what I mean? If he did it over there, he'd do it over here. Amen. So we can witness that now. So I can suffer a little bit now. Mm -hmm. You and I, we can suffer a little bit now. We can understand it, you know, because God's got a purpose. He's got a purpose behind that thing. What it is, brother said in his testimony, I don't care what y'all do, God's plan and will is going to prevail. Yeah. 
So it, it ain't really nothing. If Satan's biggest thing is death, death has been conquered. Amen. If that's all he got, and if we die for serving the Lord, we're going to be with the Lord forever. Oh, amen. Amen. I mean, what, what, what does he have on us? Nothing. nothing. He don't have nothing on us. Because a lot of people who have left this world, who have served Christ and honored the Lord, accepted him as their Savior, guess what? They don't miss this world. No way. No way. They don't miss it. <laughs> this is all we know right now. Oh, amen. But we have a hope. We have a hope over yonder. Oh, amen. You know, when we leave, we're going to be with him. Amen. A lot of folk don't have that hope, man. They don't have that hope. Some of us are suffering right now just getting through this. You know what I mean? Oh, man, this is, this is, they say it's hell down here. This ain't hell. Oh, amen. This, people say this is hell. This is not hell. <laughs> this is a training ground amen. for all mankind. Wow. Choose this day wow. who you're going to serve. Wow. And then he goes and tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, choose life. Amen. He gives us the answer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Choose life. Wow. Praise God. Listen to this. There's more reasons why we, we suffer. Sometimes God permits suffering to speak through our lives and testify and to confront others, to comfort others. For instance, um, Peter, when he denied the Lord, and Jesus told him, Satan has desired to shift you like we. But I'm afraid for your faith. I'm not going to deliver from, if I'm not going to deliver you from the hand of the enemy. You know what I mean? You need to go through some stuff right now because you denied me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And just like people deny the Lord out here, they deny the Lord. What happens? They go through total hell. Mm -hmm. They suffer so many things in their Jesus. life. You know what I mean? So what happens is, he says, I'm not going to remove it from you, but I'm going to pray for your faith. And then he says, when you are converted, he says, in other words, when you come to your senses and realize that you don't deny me, you trust me, you have faith in me, he says, then you can be able to go back and what? Strengthen your brother. Amen. Yeah, amen. So some of the things that y'all are going through, it ain't just for you. It's for somebody else. And somebody else. Because once they hear your testimony, oh, God did that, I'm going through the same thing. So what did you do to get through this thing? I trusted in the Lord. I learned how to depend on Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, I, I, I took it out of my own hands. I said, God, you work this thing out. And when he brought you through, you were like, praise God. So I can suffer. Mm -hmm. You see people right now where you are on your walk suffering with things that you once suffered with. Yes. And it's like, yes. it's killing them. They can't handle it. Yeah. But this is when we can step in and comfort them. Because mm -hmm. that thing he brought us, we can say, you know what? Let me tell you a little something. Mm -hmm. What God has done for me. Amen. And that helps that brother or that sister. Yeah. This is why we go through suffering. I mean, it's going to be a time when we don't suffer when we're out of this body and we're with him. But well, while we're on this earth, we all going to be acceptable to things, mm -hmm. disasters and, and, and trouble and persecutions. The Bible says those who live godly, go what? We're going to suffer persecution. No, yeah. But it ain't going to last forever. See, here's the thing about it. We cannot, we cannot compare 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. We live to be 110 compared to eternity. If I gotta suffer to, if I live 110, but when eternity comes, I leave this body. There's no more suffering. There's no more tears. There's no more pain. There's no more sickness. That's why when Jesus talks about when it's just like birth pains, when one have a woman have a, a child, all those nine months she went through, but soon that baby comes out, bam. <laughs> you know the suffering's over because you see the purpose of that child. The, the, that was the that was the victory. See, you, anything worth gaining in life, you, you're going to suffer through. If somebody's giving something more in their life, they don't really understand things. they got to go through some stuff, some kind of suffering. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Then we look at the blind man in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. This guy was born blind. And Jesus told him, the disciples asked him, uh, who sinned in this person's life? Was it the man? Was it his parents? And Jesus said, no. The Father allowed this to happen so he can see how great God is. Mm. Amen. So through his through his uh, uh, problem, God is going to show you. Uh, God wants to work through him and show what he can do. Mm. Amen. Praise God. Many of us suffer because watch. 
We're getting old. <laughs> Amen. I, I love the illustration that they give us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. They start talking about the body, the eyes and the knees and how, you know, they, the knees get weak and the grinders, the teeth start, you start losing them. Come on, somebody. And all these things, it's a, and in that verse 7 in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it says, uh, the body goes back to the dust, but the spirit goes back to God who gave it. So that tells us that the body is in, a, uh, is in a, a direction. The minute we're born, back to the dust. Amen? Amen? We can't do some of those things we did when we was 15 and 20. Come on. Can't do them. Amen? I love the first verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 1. It says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Watch this. A life without God can produce a bitter, lonely, and uh, hopeless old age. A life... Centered around God is fulfilling, and it will make the days of trouble when there's disability and sickness, watch this, and handicap causes barriers to enjoy life, satisfying, uh, satisfying because of the hope of eternal life. Being young is exciting, watch this, but the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God if it makes young people, people on passing pleasures instead of eternal values. People feel as though I got time. Yeah. We thought the same thing. Well, I, you know what? I wait till I get that point, you know what I mean? I wait till I, you know, get all the fun out of me. And then I go to church, you know what I mean? Have mercy. I work around senior citizens, and I, you know, I always question. I say, well, God, why did you place me here in this situation? I'm running about two and something of it. I'm saying so. I'm looking at them. Some of them are so miserable because the mistakes they made, they didn't really choose God when they was young. They didn't consider the ways of God. So now they're handicapped, now they're crippled, now they can't get around, and they're living miserably. They don't know what to do. But when they see, I can see even now with my attitude, my personality, you know what I mean, jovial and happy. Someone looking at me like, what are you happy about? Because they don't know this God. But what I do is we must continue to kind of be an example of, of, of in front of people because, you know, they're wondering why this person's so happy. What do you know that I don't know? I'm living, I live longer than you. How are you so happy? And then I just break it down to them. You know what I mean? You gotta, we got to continue to express and display our spiritual understanding and life around people. Don't let nobody bring you down Amen. on their level. You continue to, you know what I mean, lift up the Lord. Because it don't matter, it don't matter you try to get in an argument with them and try to say this and that and get mad. They don't know. Father, forgive them, they don't know. See, that's the kind of mind of Christ and having an understanding that these people don't know that one time we didn't know. So we got to understand that. And tell young people, listen, make your strength valuable to God when it's still yours. I'll say that again. Make your strength available to God when it's still yours. In other words, once the knees go back, back give up, it ain't yours no more. Ain't nothing you can do. That's why the medical field is so successful now. And, and they're saving people. They're giving them knees and shoulders and back. They're giving them everything, man. <laughs> you get new stuff, but it ain't new stuff. You know? Eventually, the whole mechanism is going to break down. Amen? So we've got to realize that don't waste your time on evil or meaningless activities that become bad habits and make you callous towards God. That's, that's for the young people. So all you young people out there, <laughs> listen up. Another reason why we suffer. Suffering is part of the pruning process. John 15, 1 and 2 says, Jesus, I am the true vine, and my father is a husband. Verse 2 says, why? says, every branch of me that bears not fruit, he takes it away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, the word pruning or purge means, pruning means this. It means to trim by cutting away dead or overgrown branches of stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. See, a lot of times, that's why when we're, as we're growing in the Lord, and we, we're, we're the branch and he's, we're connected to him, amen, being connected to him, the only way that we're going to actually experience his power is that we stay connected to him. Because through the vine is the sap. What brings out, that goes out to the branch, where the branch begins to grow fruit on it. Amen? Amen? But if there's fruit that 
then uh, things on us that need to be cut away, like you take a plant and you see somebody just, like they're cutting the plant all up, or the flower all up, and you realize you step back, wait a minute, that's the same flower you butchered, but a couple weeks from now, it's, it bloomed more flowers, and it's, it's beautiful now, because the Lord knows what things have to be cut away. He said he prunes it that it may bring forth more fruit. So right now, a lot of us are in the pruning process right this very moment. God is cutting things away. He's cutting some of that old stubborn attitude that you have and some of those things that you've been hanging on to. He's saying, look, I got this because right now you don't see it. So I'm going to just cut it away from you. You realize what I'm doing. The word purge means, look, rid something of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling to remove. In other words, to purify. He wants to purify us. Amen. Amen. We've got to remove, remove the impure things. So that's, that's part of suffering while we go through stuff. Amen. To remove those impurities. You know, your, your mouth is going to get you in trouble. I know you're saying, but you've got to get that mouth saved. I'm going to have to talk to you a little bit about some things. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And, and it's just part of the pruning process. That's why a lot of us suffer. Another uh, uh, Now let's look at some things how... We can deal with suffering. This is what we need to look at. How to deal with suffering. Like I said earlier, it starts with a question of our attitude. If we suffer with Christ and have the mind of Christ, we can realize that He was faithful unto death. And the things we go through ain't going to kill us unless it's time for us to go. But the things that we suffered and had a hard time with, we look back, it wasn't really all that bad. But while we was going through it was because we were looking at it through the eyes of God. We wasn't looking at, okay, God, what you trying to do? What you, what you talking about? What you trying to show me? What you trying to teach me? What, what direction should I take? Because don't nothing happen by osmosis. Remember, in that 1 Peter 4, 12, remember he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fury Charles was to try you. In other words, don't think it's strange. It's been ordained by God because he wants to take it to another level so we can bear more fruit. So we can get stronger. And we can be used for his use. Don't try to avoid the suffering. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Let's finish reading this here. Uh, um, we, we, we notice in James chapter 1. James 1. It says here in James 1. Oh, Y'all know this verse. James 1. Look at that verse uh, 1 and 2. I guess it's 2. James 1 and verse 2 says, uh, praise God. It says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that your trying of your faith works patience. See that? The trying of your faith works patience. If we don't go through nothing to suffer, how are we going to even know we got patience? The trying of your faith works patience. But we want to, people go to the altar all the time and they just want to, they want to, you know, uh, sow a seed, you know, tricked and sowing, giving them money up, you know, that they can be healed from a situation. No, just trust God. Keep your money. Pay your bill. Amen? Amen. Understand that God is saying here, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, of faith has to be tried. Amen? Works patience. How much faith do we have? We said we have faith, but how much faith do we have? Well, God's about to find out. And he says here, but let patience have a perfect work that work that ye may be perfect and entire, want nothing. So uh, patience have to run, it has to run its course. It has to run its course, amen? Watch this. Watch this statement, powerful statement. Our response to suffering should lead us to look beyond it. Look beyond the suffering in the attempt to see God's higher purposes and what he wants to teach us. So anytime we're in an opportunity and we're suffering, like we said, okay, something's behind this. Something's behind this thing that God is allowing to happen in my life. So I have to really pay attention. I gotta I gotta put those characteristics into play. I gotta be able to hear God. I gotta be able to love all mankind. You know, a lot of you see people who say they love they love God, but they don't love their neighbor. And while they're going through, they fussing with everybody because they're going through. Leave me alone. Well, they ain't done nothing to you. You got to be able to look past that. You, you, we we got to be consistent. We have to really get the fullness of the Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? 
Understand the fullness of what we have. We are partakers of his divine nature. So we have a presence in us that people in the world don't have. We have life. We have eternal life. And what comes along with this eternal life is, is ability and understanding and almost supernatural ability, man. X-ray vision in a sense. Yeah. We have it within our spirit. The things we see in our life, we couldn't get nowhere from a textbook. We couldn't get from, uh, from a commercial or a television show or in a library. It only comes from God. It only comes from God. The things that God is showing me now about stuff, I mean, I'm looking at my age now. My body's like, what is my body doing? It's, it's breaking down on me. But I, I, I see what's going on. He's even giving me medical Medical advice that the doctor didn't give me. Oh, yeah, they will give you that pill, you know. But he's giving me why it's happening. Praise God. And I'm listening to him. See, you you got to realize something. And I look at the people who don't have the knowledge of the, the, the medical things that we have in this world. I'm not, I'm not putting down the medical field, but some things that people who live in these deserted islands who walk around naked all day, no shoes on. And they're living to be 150. Hmm. What is God doing with them? What are they doing? They're, they're using the resources around them. Nature. Nature. From the plants and things around them. And, they, and, they, and they're eating these things and it's healing them. Amen. It's taking care of their body. Yeah. They don't have to worry about our health plan. Hmm. It's all around them. Amen. So if God is providing for them, amen, then it's just... Uh, I don't want to get into that. We we get that later. Uh, uh, let's look at uh, let's look at that that um, that uh, um, First Peter four. Let's look at sixteen. Sixteen. Look at sixteen. What it says? Well, no, no. Go to thirteen. But rejoice in that much that you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. See, when we suffer for Christ, and we're partakers of His suffering, like the brother you talk about on your job. You ain't done no wrong. You're doing your job, but you're around a bunch of jealous spirits. Mm -hmm. And people just don't want things to happen. All of us experience that. Jesus. People just don't like because, you know, well, what you, you you serving this God, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And why are you always happy and things are always working out for you? you? Well, you can have the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can experience the same love that I'm experiencing. You need to stop being so evil and repent and ask God for forgiveness. Yeah. Stop getting on me all the time. <laughs> Amen. Look at number 14. He says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory and of God resteth upon you. Praise God. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. See that? Mm -hmm. They can put you down, but see, he's being glorified. Amen. Amen. Look at 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer. And I got a better understanding about this busy body. I'm explaining to you. Or as a busybody in other man's matters. That's important because I got a revelation on that. And the revelation is this. Uh, when it says, um, as a busybody in other man's matters. We have people who are in the political field who are believers. There's nothing wrong with that. We've got people all in all types of places. And uh, uh, God places people in different professions to, you know, reach out to the world. But it's, we got to really draw a line when we try to change the custom of the culture uh, over to a custom of God in the culture of God. Yeah, we can witness to them, but once we go try to change things, you know, because we're in positions to do that by force, what you're doing is you're not doing it the way God intended you to do it. Understand what I'm saying? See, some people get in politics and they want to, you know, they want to force things down people's throat. But this is the world. And the majority of the world is not going to know Christ. Amen. We're in those positions that who God has chosen in those positions on those jobs, who he has chosen to be a part of his kingdom, we might be just be there to witness. But we can't change a whole culture yeah. and try because it's the right way. We're going to make you do it. You can't do that. You can't. You're, what you're doing is you're a busybody in other man's matters. Christ, didn't, when he came, he said, bro, you come to save the world. All those ones that God is the Father who has given me. Because you can't make nobody do anything. Yeah, right. 
You really can't. Even though it's right in the scripture, you can't still make them do it. Because that's the whole thing of whosoever will, let them come. If we present the gospel to them, you know, if they're willing, they can come. But you can't penalize because they're not coming and not doing what you want them to do. That's dictatorship. So that's... Yeah, you want somebody, let God, that's, the, that's why you love people. See, if, if the, if, when we was going through some stuff in our life that was wrong, living for the devil, 100. And somebody came along us and expressed the gospel to us, and we didn't respond. And they pulled out a shotgun and shot us because we didn't respond. Thank God that didn't happen because none of us will be here. None of us would be here. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? So we got to be able to have compassion for people and help them understand that, yes. you know, you don't want to accept it? Mm -hmm. Keep on moving. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to I'm pray for you, dog. The Lord have mercy. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Don't penalize them because they're not following you. That's, that's, that's what that, I understand what that means. You know, <clears throat> a busy body in somebody else's matters. What's 16? Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. For as much, look, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. See that? He's talking about judgment. He's talking about suffering. That we can't go through some stuff. Our faith can't be tested. I Man, come on. It begins at the house of God. Listen, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Oh, That's why we got to have mercy. Amen. Amen. we got to understand what suffering is all about. God has a plan for it. Even though we being seem like we're being crucified right now, but we're going to resurrect. Amen. We're going to have a, it's going to be a brand new us, man. Amen. Praise God. Praise brand new creature in Christ. Old things are going to pass away. Behold, new things come. That's what it's going to be like. Amen. Now watch this. Look at 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Man. You see that? You know, when a sinner, when we're saved by God, we was brought through great difficulty. And we suffered pain and loss. Amen. God delivered us. Look at 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit. That word commit is the, is the banking term. means It means to deposit for safekeeping. Amen. So he's saying, wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. Amen. See, when we when we suffer according to the will of God, we're committing our soul to a faithful creator. Amen. You see that? For a faithful creator. And we're all doing. We're not fussing. We're not complaining. We just hold on because God, one day God's going to take us through. He's going to bring us through. That's why we need the body. That's why we need one another, because we hear the testimonies, we hear, we see, and we experience what we're going through, each other, what we're going through. It just helps us as a body, help us understand. You know, hey, but wait a minute, so and so been through this, and they made it. And God, you love me, you love me too. So I know I can make it. See, that's the hope that we have. If they only had expected people to just always make it, and some folk never make it, oh, that'd be that'd be bad, wouldn't it? Believers, but all believers. All those that he has put place his spirit in, we're more than conquerors. Amen. We're more than overcomers. Amen. 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 Watch this. Praise God. It says in, in um, this verse, second, uh, this is Second Corinthians 12, 9. This is when uh, Paul had came down with, they say it was some kind of uh, illness, <laughs> or illness or some, maybe something that he went blind or whatever. We don't really know what it was. But he, he told Paul, my grace is sufficient. Oh, amen. amen. For thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. So when we, when you can admit, when we suffering, it's a weakness. Because we don't have no control of this thing. We're just holding on and, and hoping that God brings us through. We're suffering. So now we're being strengthened. God is strengthening us now. Because he's saying, I don't need your help. I'm going to show, I'm going to work through you. And I'm going to show you that you can depend on me. Can I get a witness? Amen. amen. Praise God. He had that thorn. We don't know what that thorn in the flesh was, but it was something that's caused him some problems because he went three times. Lord, can you remove it? He said, I got it. <laughs> I didn't went to the Lord about a hundred times. No, amen. amen. And he said, what did I tell you? Yeah. I got it. Amen. Yeah. 
I'm still working some things in your life. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and that all who will live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 2.12. Let me just write these verses down. He says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, he also will deny us. Acts 14.22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much Amen. tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. See, tribulation is associated with suffering. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Remember, we said the kingdom of God is God reigning and ruling in our hearts. Mm -hmm. His very presence. That's how we enter in. Mm -hmm. So how can we experience the love of God if we don't go through nothing? He wants us to get away from that old, you know, I know. <laughs> you know, I look at my kids now, they got a little older. Now I know what you were talking about. Well, I thought you knew then. Amen. <laughs> Job 13, verse 15 says this. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. You see that? Hebrews 5, 8, powerful verse. Jesus learned obedience from what he suffered. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Now, what makes us better than Jesus? If he went through something he suffered and he learned obedience, oh, amen. Amen. why can't we yes. learn obedience? Now, I love what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, Paul said that I may know him, talking about Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You notice he says the fellowship of his suffering? See, when you, you suffer, when somebody comes out with a disease and this person comes out with the same disease, you can, you can fellowship with the same suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you get the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Me and brother was talking about the sciatic nerve. You know, that goes down. They, they painful. Mm -hmm. So you can associate with that. It's, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've been there and done that. So he said, I want to I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, yeah. being made more com conformable unto his death. Knowing the things that he experienced and he went through. That is so important. Amen? And I love Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. See, let us not be weary in well-doing. Still continue to do the right thing. Still continue to trust the Lord. Even though you're suffering, you're going through some things. And well doing in due season. Listen, he ain't gonna leave you hanging. If you won't get through it in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. Don't get dizzy, don't get upset. Just keep on pressing on. Amen. You're gonna get through that thing. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, Lord, where, where's your hand? I'm going through these things, and it's like, when is it gonna stop? When is it gonna stop? I look at Wilson Mandela. He suffered 27 years in prison. But during those 27 years, he didn't do anything. He got to a point where he wasn't suffering anymore. You understand what I'm saying? First couple of weeks for me, I would have been tripping. Let me out of here. You know, still didn't make no difference. Still had 26 more years and a half to go. You see? But God prevailed. God was faithful. I look at these people who've been sentenced and... And, and, and put in prison illegally. Mm. And when DNA comes out, they find out that wasn't even the person. They didn't commit the crime. Right. And those people, they, what, they, what did they hold on to? I didn't do it. They know they didn't do it. See? That's when we, when we suffer for Christ and we go through some things in our life. Oh, I got one more verse I didn't even tell y'all. Praise God. What am I doing? Go to Romans chapter 8. This is, the, this is it right here. Hey Amen. You all ready? Yes. And as we get there, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going I'm to explain something to you. I had, a dream. I had a dream last night. And uh, in the dream, it was, it was, it was just strange. It was seven loaves of, seven loaves of bread. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's seven kids. You know, and in the Bible, what the Bible says, you know, we, we, he's the bread of life, so, you know, some kind of association. And the seven loaves of bread, and two loaves of bread 
Oh, and it was all in the in the in the paper, you know, the plastic. Two loaves of bread said, you know, these two, these two loaves are are you know they're going to make it. I mean, they're going to be successful. Or you know, they, they have the Holy Spirit. But my object, my job was to pray for all seven of them. So if those other ones didn't have the Spirit, okay. If they, the other five didn't have the spirit, what's the use of praying for them? So I was thinking, when I when I came to pray for those two loaves of bread, uh, my my emphasis was into it because I knew that they were going to make it. They were going to be successful. But this is what it taught me: the other five. Because I knew, I didn't really have no faith because I knew those, they was going to be okay. But the other five, I should have been praying for the other five Lord. because it's up to God. Oh, because he is the healer. Amen. He's the one who gives eternal life. Yeah. So we got to pray for folk. Yeah. We can't write nobody off and that's what he was trying to tell me. Oh, amen. Amen. He said, can these dry bones live? Yeah. I died just like I died for them. I, I, you, I died for them. So just because them over here, I know they're going to be alright. You know, I have no problem. And I was noticing my attitude when I was praying for them. But I don't have the same kind of attitude and passion for a person who does not have the Spirit of God. Because that's mercy. And that's what God showed me. I'm going to share it with y'all. But in Romans 8, how to get it out? Romans 8, watch this. Y'all heard this. 28. And we know. See, listen. You ain't suffering nothing. You don't know nothing. You don't know. This is the only way you're going to know. And we know that all things work together. Brother said in the testimony. You know, God's plan is going to come through. Regardless of what you do to me. He says, and we know that all things work together, listen, for good to them that love God. Who are, who are they? That love God. <coughs> Obey them. Have the mind to suffer. Listen to them. Love all mankind. Yeah. How to handle fear. These are the ones who love. Trust God. He says all things will work together for good for them that love God. Amen. Even though right now I'm suffering, it's going to work for good. Mm -hmm. Then he says here, praise God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. We've been called. Amen. So it's a purpose what God is trying to do in our life. Philippians. Chapter 2, verse 13. Watch this. Praise God. Amen. This is all extra stuff here, y'all. <laughs> he says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's what he's, what he's doing. We got to suffer. He's going to prune. He's pruning us. He's shaping us. He's cutting away. He's adding. Amen. Because he wants to bring forth more fruit. And he's, because he wants to get the best of us out and the best of him in so he can work through us. And, and, and so we, so we can't do this on our own. We dying daily. But we're renewed day by day in our spirit with, with his wisdom and his knowledge. And we depend on that and we trust in that. So while we, we, we suffer for a little while. That's all. It's just a little while. Some of the little habits we try to hold on to and we want to keep them. We're going to look back and say, what, what took me so long? I was so hard here. Father God, we want to thank you for your blessings. And we want to thank you that we, we our desires to have a mind to suffer. That we have a better understanding that regardless of what happens. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm. I got one more. Uh, Lord, Lord, help me, help me, Lord. Look at this, y'all. Oh, look, this is. Did I, did I read this? Look at Matthew 10. Mm. See, remember, Satan came to kill, rob, and destroy. Remember that first thing I said, kill. That's all. That's the best he got. Oh, when we died. We said, what we said? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Look at this. Look at Matthew 10. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Matthew 10. Look at 20, uh, oh, hallelujah, thank you. Look at 28. 
And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy them, both the soul and body in hell. You see that? Somebody can shoot you, and you're suffering the body, but they can't touch that soul. Come on, yeah. <laughs> they can't touch the soul. Amen. We got to fear the one who can put the body and soul, who's in charge. So we ought to just understand, rest in God, knowing that we're going to suffer down here, but it ain't all be forever. God's got a plan. Amen. God bless you all. Praise God. Praise the Lord.